Bezat Hashem, we have a special class today. The class is going to be about how to blow shofar. And we have made this class, especially for five goals, five purposes of this class. And the five are, number one, is to understand the mezvah of shofar, which comes up only once a year. It's a mezvah in HaTorah, as we're going to see. Number two is, you notice that in shul, a lot of times when people are listening to the shofar, they're a little bit lost. They're not exactly understanding. They know there's a sound of shofar, but they cannot tell the difference what the sounds are. We hope in this class that after listening to this class, we'll understand what the sounds of the shofar are. Number three is also, it should be as a guide to anyone who wants to begin blowing the shofar. At least you should know what to listen to, what to blow, and how to start, lear- how to start learning how to blow. Number four is to train us to look out for the ignorant tokeya. What does that mean, the ignorant tokeya? Unfortunately, many people don't know the difference of what the sounds of shofar have to be. And in many shuls, it's a very sad situation, many shuls, the Baal Tokia has no clue of any halakha. He just knows how to blow. And everybody who knows how to blow is qualified already. And he gets up and he blows and everybody says, wow, beautiful, take you out. And unfortunately, I've been present in many places, in many places where the Tokia doesn't know and Lo Aleinu, even the so-called rabbi over there, is not familiar with the halakhot. So therefore, we hope that after listening to this shiur, at least you'll know to look out if there's somebody who knows or who doesn't know the halakhot of Tokia Chofar. And finally, the, the, the purpose of this class is that if a person wants to learn the halachot from inside, from the Shulchan Aruch, Mishnah Brura, Kafa Hayim, the simanim that discuss the tekiaot of Shofar, which is siman tafkuf tzadi, is a very difficult siman to understand. We hope that with this class, it will be as an introduction to go into the halachot. Hopefully, after listening to this class, it will be clarified. I know myself personally, even though I studied these halachot inside many times, when I heard the class from Rabbi Yaakov Yosef, Zechet Sadiq Lebracha, the son of Acham Badiyah Yosef, Shlita, it made it much easier, much clearer after hearing somebody explain it, and therefore we hope to give this over in a clear way. We divided this class into five parts, and they should just know what to expect. The first part of the class, we're going to speak about the source of the Mizvah of Shofar. Number two, the second part, we're going to speak about what the sounds of the shofar are, and we have today with us a very special tokeya, Rabbi Dayan from Ketet Tzion. Ketet Tzion is under the, the great rabbi, Rabbi Masselton, Rabbi Max Masselton, and Rabbi Dayan is about tokeya over there, so you already have somebody who's done shimush, who's done it in front of great Tamideh HaChamim, and he's going to help us with the sounds of the shofar. The third part of the class, we'll be speaking about the breathing by each of the sounds. You will see when we get to it. The fourth part of the class is the length of each of the sounds of the, sh- of the shofar. And finally, the final part of the class will speak about when to blow the shofar, whether it's in the day or in the tefillot, as we'll see, Barzat Hashem. Let's get to the class, Barzat Hashem. The first part, the source of the mitzvah of Tikkat Shofar. Why do we have to blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah? So the Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah explains, right? It's appropriate Masechet for it. The Gemara explains that you find in the Torah, a commandment for blowing a sound called a terwa'ah on the seventh month. Three times in the Torah we find this commandment. Twice it's written by the day of Rosh Hashanah, and the third time the Torah commands that we must blow terwa'ah, it's written in Parashat Behar regarding the mitzvah of blowing the shofar on Yom Kippur of the Yobel year. And the Pesukim say as follows, in Parashat Temor regarding Rosh Hashanah, Torah says, the Bel Bnei Israel speak to the Jewish people. Lemor b'chodesh shebi'ay be'had la'chodesh on the seventh month, which we know to be Tishrei, on the first of the month, which is Rosh Hashanah. Yeh lachen shabbaton. It should be a day where you stop working. Zichron teruah mekakodesh. It's a day where you have you have to remember the teruah. It's a day that you must declare it as kodesh. The second time we find a commandment for shofar, or the sound of teruah, really, is in Parashat Pinchas. Torah says over there, b'chodesh shebi'ay be'had la'chodesh which we just explained, that's Rosh Hashanah. Mikra Kodesh Yeh Lachem, Kol Mechet Abodah Lo Ta'asu, Yom Terai Yeh Lachem. It's a day of holiness, you can't do any work, and it should be a day of teruah. Those are the two times in the Torah, where Torah commands about blowing the shofar, or really, about making the sound of teruah. Third time, like we mentioned, Prashat Behar, and that's talking about the Yom Kippur on the Yobel year, when we free the slaves, the Torah says like this, Ve'abarta shofar teruah b'chodesh ha'shiva'i, you shall make a sound of shofar of teruah on the seventh month, which is Tishrei, 
on the tenth of the month, which is Yom Kippur, like the Torah says right here, you should make the sound of shofar in all of your lands. So here the Torah tells us the source of blowing, shof, of t- sounding the sound of teruah. Now the Gemara explains that since the commandment came and in the Torah specifying that it has to be on the seventh month, we learn from here that really the sound of teruah has to be heard on Rosh Hashanah as well as on Yom Kippur of the Yobel year, three times. You must make three sounds of teruah every Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur of the tenth year, of the uh, Yom Kippur of the Yobel year. These, this is the source of blowing teruah. Now, Torah, the Gemara explains that from the Torah we have an obligation to blow besides the sound of teruah, to blow another sound called a tekiah. What is a tekiah? The Gemara explains tekiah is a straight sound. A straight sound that just goes like this. So this is a tekiah. The Gemara says this is called ha'barat kol. It's just a straight sound. There's nothing that breaks it up. So from here we learn that there's got to be a tekiah, which what we call today a tekiah, before the teruah and after the teruah. How do you not have to be before and afterwards? The Gemara gives two sources. We'll just give you one very quickly. The pasuk that we just quoted by Yom Kippur, it says, Veha'abarta shofar teruah. It says the word ha'abara, which means a straight sound, before the teruah. So that's how we know there's got to be a straight sound before the teruah. And then continuing the pasuk, it says afterwards, ta'abiru shofar. After the Torah mentioned the word teruah, it says again the word ta'abiru. From here, says the Gemara, we learned that there's got to be a teke'ah before and after every single teruah. So let's summarize. We must blow three teruahs on Rosh Hashanah. Also, the Torah tells us that each teruah must have a teke'ah beforehand and teke'ah afterwards, which we explained that teke'ah has to be a straight sound, which if you count now three teruahs and each one has teke'ah before and afterwards, we have a total of nine sounds. A tekiah, a teruah, and a tekiah, three times. And those are the nine sounds that you'll, if you ever open up Shohan Aruch, or if you open up the Gemara, the Gemara always mentions Tish'ah Kolot, this is what we're referring to. A tekiah, teruah, and tekiah, a tekiah, teruah, and tekiah, tekiah, teruah, and tekiah. To make it more simple, so the Hachamim give Rashi Tebot. Tekiah, the Rashi Tebot is Tav. For the teruah, you can't say tav again because we use that for the tekah, so we'll say a resh, and again the tekah is a tav, so it comes out tarat, tarat, tarat. So if you ever notice in the mahazor, when you see it says tafresh taf, tarat, it's referring to tekah, teruah, and tekah. Good. We'll move on now to the second part of the class, and that is the sounds of the shofar. The Rambam points out, the Rambam, in the shofar, that throughout the years, the sound of the teruah was lost. Throughout the years in the Galut, and the Jews weren't in one place, so the Hachamim had a doubt exactly what the sound of teruah. Remember, the Torah is a written Torah. And even the Torah Shabbat al eventually was committed to writing. So therefore, if you're reading and it tells you about a sound, you're not hearing an audio like you're hearing now, you're just reading words. So the Hachamim had a doubt. What is exactly teruah? In fact, what does teruah mean? So, teruah, the Gemara explains, really means to cry. Where do we get this from? If you look at Targum Unklus, where it says, Zichron teruah, like we said, the first pasuk, the Targum Unklus translates, Dichron Yebaba. It's a memory of Yebaba. So, therefore, teruah means Yebaba. But we haven't solved anything. What does Yebaba mean? So, the Gemara says, you want to know what Yebaba is? Look in Tanakh where the word comes up. And where does it come up? It comes up in Sefer Shoftim. In the famous song that Devorah sang after the defeat of Sisera, Devorah says over there that the mother of Sisera was waiting by the, by the window because Sisera was a great general. And whenever he went out to war, he always won. And she would always wait by the window to see when he comes back to celebrate his victory with him. Mm-hmm. However, this time when Sisera went to battle against the Jews, he lost. And when he lost, he was sitting by the window and waiting and waiting. And she realized eventually that her son is not going to come back. And she cried. And the words in the Pasuk, listen to the words of the Pasuk. The Pasuk says like this. By the window, she looked out and she started yabib. And over there, it's clearly referring to what? To crying. The mother of Sisera stood by the window crying because she said, 
מדוע איחרו פעמי מרכבותיו? How come the, the, the sounds of the feet of his chariots, how come they're so delayed? And she realized her son is not here, so she was meyabib, which means she was crying. Ah, beautiful. So what the Gemara says, now we have an explanation, we have a translation for the word teru'ah. Teru'ah means to cry. So when the Torah is telling us to blow a teru'ah, it means that you have to blow a sound which sounds like crying. However, the Gemara says there's a problem. Because when a person cries, there's two parts of the crying. And if you want to see this clearly, look at how children cry. The first, or even adults, how do they cry? A person first cries long sounds and he begins... <laughs> and then eventually he starts to go into a, a, a wail. <laughs> That's how usually a person cries. So, which part of the crying is it? Is it the first part, which is the longer sounds, or is it the very, very short sounds next to each other? To that, the Gemara gives names. The first sound, the Gemara says, it's called Shebarim, and the Shofar will sound like this. That's like the broken up sounds of the beginning part of the cry. The second part, which is the Gemara calls Teru'ah, not to be confused with the Teru'ah of the Torah, because we're not sure what that Teru'ah is. This Teru'ah is the Hachamim's words of the second part of the cry, which is a very short breath, and goes like this. So the Gemara had a suffering. It's not sure, is it Shebarim? Is it Teru'ah? Or maybe when the Torah says that Teru'ah means to cry, the, the meaning of the Torah's word of Teru'ah is really both sounds together. Shebarim and Teru'ah, which goes like this. So because of the suffix, because of the question of the Gemara, the Gemara says, therefore, just to be your Tzedeh just because we're not sure what the Torah really means, does it mean which part of the Torah, which sound of the crying is it? We do all three. We do Shebarim, which is the short sounds, like you heard. We do Teru'ah, which is the very, very short sounds. And we do Shebarim and Teru'ah together. And this way we covered all three opinions. Why? Because we're not sure what the Torah meant when it says Teru'ah. This is the conclusion of the Gemara, and this is the Halakha. There's a very interesting Zohar. If you look in the Zohar, the Kaf Ha'im quotes the Zohar. The Zohar says mm -hmm. that although the Gemara says that it's really, we're not, we blow all the sounds because we're not sure what it is, the Zohar says really, al pi Kabbalah, and the secrets of the Torah, really all the sounds are necessary. So although we're doing it out of a safik, but really says the Zohar, it's not so much of a safik. We need all the sounds to be heard. So don't think that if you heard one of the things, one of the sounds, you're just your say because out of safik. No, it says the Zohar, all the sounds are necessary and they have meanings, api kabbalah. And the Kafahayim quotes the Arizal. And the Arizal speaks about all the sounds, how they're important and necessary. And he brings a lot of secrets like, um, why we need all the sounds. So now, comes out, that, like we said, the Teru'an and the Torah has three different ways of of interpreting it, of, of uh, sounding it. One is either Shebarim, which goes like this again, or Teru'ah, or Shebarim and Teru'ah together. Beautiful. Now, keep in mind, this is when we sounded that, that just to sound what the sound of Teru'ah is. We mentioned in the beginning of the class, if you remember, that each Teru'ah must have a Teki'ah before and a Teki'ah afterwards. So that means when we're blowing all the different sounds to be Yotzei Dehoba, we're blowing all the three different ways of the Teru'ah, each one must have before it a Teki'ah before and has to have afterwards another straight Teki'ah. So now, Originally, we said there was only nine sounds. But after the suffix, because you have to have a tekiah, and then maybe the Torah is a shebarim, and then tekiah, so it comes out tekiah, shebarim, tekiah, that's three sounds. Or maybe the Torah and the Torah really means what we call today teruah, which is a short sound, so it comes out, you have to have tekiah, uh, teruah, and then tekiah. That's another three sounds, making a total six. Or maybe when the Torah says teruah, it really means Shebarim and Teruah together, and plus the Tekiah before and Tekiah afterwards. That will be four sounds, and bringing the total to ten sounds, which is what we see in the Sidurim, sometimes called Tashat, Teruah, Shebarim, Teruah, 
talat teruat tekea teruat tekea or tashrat tekea shebarim teruat and then tekea so it's complicated if you're just listening to this if you're watching the video you'll see the words come up on the screen it makes it a little easier but we'll make it a little simpler now by listening to the sounds first we're going to blow the sound of the first suffix exactly the first way of what teruah we think in the Torah is which is shebarim tashat teruah tekea shebarim tekea Now, we're going to blow the second way of interpreting teruah, which is what we call today teruah. And keep in mind, we have to have a tikah before and tikah after the teruah. And it goes like this. Beautiful. And now, the third way of what, how the Gemara interpreted teruah, like we said, is maybe it's shebarim teruah. And Shebarim Terah has to have a tekeah before and has to have a tekeah afterwards. So it goes like this. Beautiful. That brings us to 10 sounds. A total of 10 sounds just to be Yotse Yedeh of one time the Torah is saying teruah. Remember, we have a command that we have to blow teruah three times. Right? In the Torah. The Torah tells us whatever the Torah calls teruah has to be blown three times. Each one must have a tekiah beforehand and afterwards. In order to be yotse de hubah, the doubt of what teruah is, we have to blow a total of ten. So it comes out that we have to blow these ten sounds three times in order to be yotzei dehawat, in order to fulfill our obligation when the Torah says we have to blow teruah three times. So it brings us to the total of 30 sounds. So where the Gemara talks about nine sounds, and even Shohar Aruch sometimes will mention nine sounds, it really means 30 sounds. Because that teruah, which is counted only as one when we call it nine sounds, after when we blow all the different sounds in order to be yotzei dehawat, it brings us to the total of 30 sounds. Now, before we finish this section of the class, I just want to point out that you should know that the Torah you just heard right now maybe sounded familiar, maybe not. Depends who's listening. There's actually different ways of doing the Torah. There's ways, there's, there's the most common Torah, which is a broken up short blows, sounds like this. And then there's the another way which you've heard up till now in the class, which is the way the Syrians make the teruah. It goes like this. <laughs> Sounds more like a lululululu. There's minhak teman. There's a Yemenite way of blowing the teruah. There's different ways of blowing the teruah. If you look in the sefer called Muadim Uzmanim, he brings you sources for all of them. And each one has his source. So a person, wherever you're praying, you should know, even though you didn't hear it exactly this way on the on the video, you should still check it out by by uh, an authorized rabbi and a knowledgeable rabbi of these halachot, exactly what your custom is to the sound of the teruah. For our class, Barzat say we will be using the sound of teruah like the Syrian custom, it's just a little bit easier for the tokea Rabbi Dan to do, and which will sound a little bit more like the lululululu. Let's move on now to the third part of the class. Breathing by each sound. We mentioned already, by now you should have already the knowledge of what the sounds are. The next halakha that's brought down in Shohan Aruch is that each of the letters, like we said, tarat, tashrat, or tashat, each of the sounds must be done with one breath. That means when you blow a tekiah, the person blowing cannot take a break in the middle. He can't blow a half a tekiah, breathe, and then blow, continue that tekiah. The tekiah must be done with one breath. He must take in the breath and then blow. So too, the shebarim, even though it's done with few short breath, he cannot breathe in between. He has to do all the minimum of three shebarim in one breath. The same would be by teruah. If a person is doing a teruah, he cannot take a break and breathe in the middle of the teruah. He has to do it all in one shot. Okay? If a person breathes in the middle, he takes a break and he takes a breath in the middle, then 
that sound is considered like got cut off, and he has to repeat that sound. So for example, let us say a person is doing the shivarim, and after two shivarim, mm-hmm. he takes a breath, and it sounds like this, and then he does the third one. And then... So even though you heard three sounds, but since the Baal Tokea took a breath in between, that sound of shivarim is pasul, he has to repeat it. Now really, if you're just listening in shul, you may not realize if he took a breath or not. So therefore, it's important that whoever is blowing has to be a person who is Yerei Shamaim. He has to be a person who, who understands the importance and significance of Halakha, not just that he should sound good in front of people. He shouldn't be embarrassed that if he has to make another Tekiah because people might say, oh, he messed up. It's very important that the person who is blowing has to be knowledgeable of the Halakha, because sometimes he can't pick it up if he took a breath or not. He has to know that it can only be done with one breath. However, there's a question in Halakha. We mentioned that the Teru'ah in the Torah has three possibilities. Either it's Shevarim, either it's Teru'ah, or Shevarim Teru'ah together. And we also mentioned the Halakha that each of the sounds have to be done in one breath. What about Shevarim Teru'ah? Since... According to, uh, since we, we said that maybe that's what the Torah meant when you blow Teru'ah, it meant that you should blow Shevarim and Teru'ah together. So maybe you should do it with one breath. Or maybe because they're really two different sounds, Shevarim and Teru'ah, maybe you should take a breath in between. So what is the halakha? Guess what? Whatever answer you answered, you were correct. Because there's an opinion that says like you. There's actually a three-way mahluk. Three opinions, excuse me. Two, uh, two opinions are holeg, they're arguing each other, and the third one is like a compromise. The first opinion is the opinion of the Rishonim, the earlier authorities before Shohan Aruch, the Ramban, Nachmanides, and Abbeinu Asher, the Rosh. They hold that the Shevarim in Teru'ah is coming to, to substitute for what the Torah calls the Teru'ah. So it's really one sound. And therefore, you're not allowed to take a breath in between. If you take a breath in between, it's like you broke up the Shevarim like we saw beforehand. Or you broke up a Teru'ah and took a breath in between. And therefore, when the person is blowing, the Tokea is blowing, the Tashrat, where the Shevarim Teru'ah are coming to substitute the Teru'ah and the Torah, then he cannot take a breath in between. It has to be done in one breath. That's the opinion of the Ramban and the Rosh. That's the first opinion. The other opinions, which is Rabbeinu Tam, and in fact, the Be'er Gulam points out that the majority of the Mefashim as well, they hold that the Shevarim and Teru'ah has to be done in two breaths. Why? You have to take a breath in between. Because we said beforehand that the Shevarim and Teru'ah are the sounds of a person crying. The Shevarim are the beginning when a person starts to cry, and the Teru'ah is the second part of a person cries. Nobody cries in the combined voice. It goes in stages. First Shebarim, then Teru'ah. So these are two different sounds. And therefore they have to be done with two different breaths. According to majority of Ahronim, it's a little bit hard, but according to majority of Ahronim, these two opinions don't agree with each other at all. That means when Rabbi Utam says you have to take a breath in between, if you don't take a breath according to Rabbi Utam, it's Pasul. You're not Yod Sayyidi Hubba. And according to the Ramban, if you take a uh, according to the ban, if you do it all in one shot, it's fine. But if you take a breath in between, that's also not good. So they are completely are contradicting each other. So what do we do? So there's a third opinion, who also one of the Rishonim, is known as the Tenumat Adeshin. He has a book called Tenumat Adeshin, one of the great Rishonim. And he makes a compromise. He says, you know what you do? Anyway, we blow at different times. We blow right after Sefer Torah. And that's when most Kehilot sit down to listen to the sounds. And we also blow in Musaf. It depends on different customs. And most of us blow during the Tflat Lahas or the Hazara. So therefore, it says it about this. And very simple. We'll make a compromise. When we're blowing the first set of blows, which is right after the Sefer Torah, we'll do the Shebarim and Teru'ah in one breath. And when we blow in Musaf, we'll do it in two breaths. This way, we're covered according to all opinions. The opinion of the Ramban and the Rosh who say that you have to blow in one breath. The Shebarim Mitarah, we've done that when? We've done that in the first set of blows, right after the Sefer Torah. And according to the Ben Utam, who says you have to do it in two breaths, then you do it when? When we stand up. That's the compromise of the, of the Turmat and Deshin. And Maran Shohan Aruch goes with that opinion. However, the Ramah, which is the Minhag of the Ashkenazim, he says that the Minhag is we always do two breaths. That's the Ramah's opinion. Always to do two. 
He said, no, though, the later Ahronim, like the Mishnah Berula and the Hazon Ish, one of the greatest Ashkenazi Ahronim, point out that if you don't have such a minhag, then it's better to do like the compromise of the Turmat Adeshin, where the Shohan Aruch goes with it, because technically there are some Ahronim that explain that even according to the Ramban, I mean, excuse me, to the Ben Wutam, if you do do it in one breath, you Yotzeh B'di Ahaba, so it's better to be Yotzeh Yedi Ahaba, all the opinions, to actually blow twice. That's the compromise of Shohan Aruch, the opinion of the Rama and the Mishnah Berula and the Ruru the Shah Ratsiyun and the Hazon Ish, who say that it's better to follow what the Shohan Ruch says to make a compromise. And that's in fact the Halakha Lema'ase for the Sfaradim. What we do is that the first set of blows that we blow after the Sifar Torah, we blow the Shebarim and Terah in one breath. And when it comes to the Musaf, we take two breaths. Now, that's not only in Hazar and Lachas, but any time that we blow after the, only the first set, we don't, we blow in one breath, afterwards we blow in two. Again, if you're listening, you'll not be able to pick it up. If you're watching the Baal Tokea, you should see that he's able to do it. And if you yourself are the Baal Tokea, you should know this halakha. You must do it this way. And it's very, very important that a person does it this way. This funny bring, the poskim bring how important that a person should be able to do it this way. And if you're the rabbi of the shul, then you have to be on top of this, and you have to sit down with the tokea beforehand and make sure that he knows the salakha and he does it in front of you, and he has to know that he has to take a breath in the te- in the blows that he, we do when standing up, and the tekeot, which are called tekeot dim yosef, that we blow after Sefer Torah, he should do the shabarim and terah in one breath. Now we're up to the fourth part of the class, the length of each sound of the blows of the shofar. Now, first thing you have to know that maximum length of the sound of the shofar, you could do as long as you want. There's three sounds, basically. There's a tekiah, there's a teruah, and there's a shebarim. You already should know what the sounds are by now. If not, we went to the beginning of the shiur. Okay. Uh, how long they could be, it doesn't make a difference. If the Baal has energy, and if the Kahal has a plenty of time, you can sit there and do a Tekah as long as you want. Like, here we go, let's see a, a long Tekah. Oh. Okay, if it's a Teruah also. A Teruah, if, if a Baal Tokia wants to blow the Teruah as long as possible, you could also do it as long as possible. There's no limit. We're going to have a limit in the class because uh, we have to continue. And Shebarim. Shebarim here is a little tricky. Each Sheber has a limit. It cannot be so long because if the Sheber goes so long, it's going to sound like a Tekiah. However, the amount of Shebarim, there's no limit. The common way to do Shebarim, most, not most people, almost everybody does three Shebarim. But if a person really wants to be more safe, wants to add on the three Shebarim, wants to make four, five, six, seven, as we can see in the second, there's no problem like the words of the poskim. En lahosh, there's no hashash, there's not even a doubt. So if you're sitting in school and the guy made more than three shebarim, he made ten shebarim, it doesn't make a difference. For example, if it sounds like this. Right? It doesn't make a difference. There's no limit, but the Ahronim say that you should keep it to a minimum of only three shebarim. However, there is a minimum length of how long the tekiah, the teruah, and all the three sounds of Shebarim, they ha- there's, a sa- there's a sound that there's a limit for them, how minimum they are. Okay, and this is very important. This is a little tricky, so you have to pay attention. Let's start with what the Mishnah says. The Mishnah says that the length of the Tekiah, which is a straight sound, has to be the same length of the Teruah. You should know there's a big mahlokit, exactly how to explain this, which is going to give you the straight halakha lemaaseh, what we do, the Sfaradim do, and I believe almost all the Kilo do as well. The length of the Teruah and the Tekiah has to be exactly the same. Question is, how long is the length of, ter- of Teruah? I already know that they have to, the Tekiah has to be like Teruah, but I don't know what, how long Teruah has to be. So the bottom line halakha is that Teruah minimum. Again, you can do as long as you want, but the minimum has to be what the Gemara says, three Yebabot. What is, how long is one Yebaba? So the, the Rishonim explain, according to the Shita, that each Yebaba must be three Turmitim. What is a Turmit? Turmit means any short breath. Kowah Be'alma. Like this. Tuk. That is called a Turmit. Each Yebaba must be three Turmitim. The Teruah must be three Yebabot. Simple mathematics. I hope we're still 
familiar with it, or you could take out your iPhone and do it. Three times three equals nine. Three of bought, each one is three cohort, it comes out to nine short breath. That's how long terroir has to be. So therefore, minimum terroir has to be something like this. That's it. How long is that? Depends on the tokea. But an average, and this is not my average, according to Hakam Yaakov Yosef, Zecha Zadig Racha, he said he did a study and listening to many tokaim, and he said an average comes out to about two seconds. So each teruah must be an average of two seconds. In fact, I know personally when we stand, when we do the tikkot by us in our shul, I have a digital clock in front of me. When I sit there, I'm watching per second to make sure that we did at least two seconds. Okay? Now that we know how long the teruah is, we know how long the tikkot is. Tikkot also has to be minimum of two seconds because since the teruah is two seconds, tikkot also has to be Two seconds. So therefore, when I'm listening to the sound of tarat, which is tekiah, teruah, tekiah, each one has to, each of the sounds has to be done with its own breath, and has to be a minimum of two seconds. So I'm going to be listening for a minimum of six seconds to hear the set of tarat. Good. That's fine, and that's wonderful. The same will apply to shebarim. Shebarim is also equal to teruah. The three sounds of Shebarim have to be the same length of a teruah, which is also about two seconds. That means you have to do the Shebarim, the three, within two seconds. It sound like this. So it's about two seconds. As long as the length of each Sheber was longer than the teruah, and also it was not as long as two seconds, which is the length of the full teruah, which was going to make it sound like a tekaa, you would say, Dehobad the Shebarim, and each tekaa beforehand and afterwards also must be the same length as the Torah we said beforehand, which is about two seconds. So you're going to have tekaa, two seconds. Shebarim, all the three sounds combined is going to be two seconds, and another tekaa, also two seconds. However, there's a third set, the Tashrat. Remember, the Tashrat, where the Shebarim and Torah, it's coming to substitute Torah. Technically, that's what the Torah means, Teruah, it's really one sound. So the Shebarim and Teruah combined will be, remember each one has to be two seconds, so the Shebarim and Teruah combined will be four seconds. And the rule is, like the Mishnah says, that Tekiah is the same length as Teruah, which means that the Tekiah of the Tashrat has to be longer than the Tekiah of the other two, which is Tashrat and Tarat. Where the tekiah of Tashat and Tarat is only two seconds, the tekiah of the Tashat must be a minimum of four seconds. It's a little bit longer. And I might say four seconds is nothing. Four seconds is actually long. Here is a sample of a tekiah that of the Tashat minimum. Start. That was a minimum of four seconds. If you're watching your clock, that was a minimum. It's Sounds easy, but for the person who's blowing, especially if he's blowing and blowing, and he's the only tokea in the shul, and he's blowing again and again, sometimes he can get very tired at the end, and he might not be able to, to give it his full energy, especially if the person gets older and older. It's not so easy to do the tekea out of the tashad towards the end of the blowings. So therefore, the tokea and the people should try to pay attention. Now, when it comes to the blowing of the tashrat, it has to be... Lo, as long as the Shebarim and the inside. The Tekiah has to be as long as the Shebarim and the inside, which is four seconds. Now, let's summarize this section. Tashat, which is the blowings of Tekiah, Shebarim, Teruah, is two seconds per sound and around six seconds total. Tadat, which is the blowings of Tekiah, Teruah, Tekiah, also is two seconds each sound, bringing the total to six seconds. And Tashrat, which is Tekiah, Shebarim Teruah, and Tekiah, each sound, which is the Tekiah and the Shebarim Teruah, each one is four seconds, bringing the total to about 12 seconds. And here are the sounds in the following order Tashrat, Tashat, and then finally Tarat. Let's begin with Tashrat.
perfect. If you were watching the video with the seconds, or if you were listening and timing the seconds, you'll see exactly the tekiaot, the sound of tekiah by the shevarim, which is the tashat, or by the teruah, which is the tarat, was two seconds each, and the sound of the tekiah by the tashrat was four seconds each. Beforehand, the tekiah before tashrat, and the tekiah after tashrat. And the, now we come to the last part of the class, which is when to blow. First of all, the Mizvah blowing shofar, like the Mishnah Masech and Megillah says, and the Torah actually says it, but the Mishnah explains it, it says, Yom Teru'ah, it has to be a day of Torah, which means you can only blow in the daytime. Okay? And that means, the daytime means really after sunrise until sunset. But if a person heard it before sunrise, then he's Yotzeh B'di Yodei V'chobah B'di Abad. However, after sunset, it's a suffix, which means if a person is blowing for another man after sunset, he's not allowed to make a berakha because it's a suffix. Maybe it's really nighttime. Suffix berachot lehakel, we don't make a berakha. However, if it's beforehand, even though it's not a minyan, if a person must hear it, if it's a male, where he has the obligation from the Torah to listen to the sound of the shofar, you can make a bracha for him, even though you personally have been your say dehoba, you the tokea, that means you can still make a bracha for him. That's the time to blow shofar in the daytime. In the tefillah, when do we blow? And the answer is that there are five times when we blow, and bringing the total sounds to 101 sounds. If you remember in the beginning part of the class, we mentioned that there are 30 sounds when we first blow. And the 30 sounds are to cover mm -hmm. us for when the Torah says teru'ah three times, and it's to cover what the sound of teru'ah is, and also each of the sounds has to have teki'ah beforehand and teki'ah afterwards. So that group, the, we, the first time that we blow is right after the reading of the Torah, we come to do the mitzvah of blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, and that's the first time we're doing it. If it's the first day, uh, if the first day of the holiday is not Shabbat, so then we'll make two birachot, the biracha of Atikat Shofar and the biracha of Shehiyanu, and then we'll blow over there 30 sounds. Like we mentioned in the beginning of class, what these 30 sounds are. That's the first time we blow. There's different customs over here. The halakha calls it tekeod miyoshev, which means these are tekeod that we usually sit down on. This doesn't mean that there's an obligation to sit down. It just means that we have permission to sit down. In fact, most of the places that I've seen, they do sit down. I was once praying somewhere where they had a custom that everybody stood up by the Tikhaot de Miyoshev. And I asked, and the rabbi said, that's the minhag over here. And later on, I found out that Miyoshev doesn't mean you have to sit down. That's supposed to be explained. It just means it's an option to sit down. That's the first set that we blow, 30 sounds. Afterwards, when we pray the Amidah of Musaf, we blow in the middle of the Amidah 10 sounds after the blessing that we make on, Zikr, on uh, um, shof, uh, of, of the three Berachot on Malchuyot and then, uh, then we make another we blow another 10 sounds by Zikronot and then another 10 sounds by Shofarot that's an Amidah of Lachash if you happen to be praying in the middle and you're not up to where the Hazan is then you should pause, listen to the sounds in the middle of the tefillah shalahash, and then once he's done blowing, then he can continue tefillah. If you're ahead, and you got up to the biracha of malchuyot, and then the tokea didn't get up to it, then you should just stand there quietly, and patiently wait till the tokea gets to that part, and then listen to him. So now, if we're blowing 10 sounds by malchuyot, 10 sounds by zikronot, and 10 sounds by shofarot, it brings us to another total of 30 sounds. We repeat the same process by the Hazara. That when the Hazan and the Hazara gets up to Malchuyot, we blow another 10 sounds. When the Hazan gets up to Zikronot, we blow another 10 sounds. And finally, when the Hazan gets up to Shofarot, we blow another 10 sounds. And now, we have in the Hazara another 30 sounds. So we had 30 by, you know, right in the beginning, right after Kriyat Torah. We had 30 in the silent Amida, in the Lahaj. And we have 30 also in the Hazara, bring us a total of 90. After the Hazara, we say Kaddish Tid Kabbal, like we say after every Hazara. And the Kaddish Tid Kabbal, over there, right before we say Tid Kabbal, we, say, we blow over there another 10 sounds. That brings us a total of 100 sounds. 
And then finally, before we say Alim Shabbat, the Sfaradim say, Barakhu Tashem Murach again one more time. And right over there, right, right before Barakhu, we blow another sound. Now here, there's a difference. The Ashkenazim also blow a sound. The Ashkenazim do a Tikiagidullah, which is a straight, long sound, which sound something like this. Depends on the Ba'at Tokea how long he'll do it. This, for us as Faradim, we do a Teru'a Gedola, which goes like this. No, that was not edited at all. That was pure live sound without any manipulation, and all depends on the tokea. And technically, even though it's called a teragidula, it doesn't have to be this long. As long as it goes beyond the four seconds, if a guy does four seconds, five seconds, it's anyway man hack to do that last sound, but it brings us a total of 101 sounds. And as we know, 101 sounds is a gimache of Michael who is the angel who defends the Jewish people. And on this day, when Hashem comes to judge the Jewish people, the Zichron Teru'ah, the Teru'ah that we blow, we hope to arouse the defense, defending angels of the Jewish people. And Hashem should write us, Be'ezat Hashem, to a year full of Beracha and Hatzlacha, Be'ezat Hashem. We hope you enjoyed the class. We want to thank J Root Radio plus BSD Productions and of course by Day and Fibke Tetzion for the take you out. And... We hope that Be'azat Hashem should be Mezakeh Rabin and should make the Alakha a little bit more knowledgeable. School of Shalim Rabot, Tobot, Unaimot. We should have a Shana Toba, Mele'ah, Bechol, Tub, Amen, Kenihiratzon.